And here we go, picks and bans for game number one. CJ Entis versus the Jin Air Green Wings. And you can see the last picks and bans from their previous matches. And there is that Rek'Sai ban first off from CJ. Yeah, Rek'Sai has been an enormous priority for Chaser because he does exert such great pressure and has good ganking on it to get his lanes ahead in the early game. Of course. And they're not going to be too afraid, I think, of his Jarvan, so they'll force him to play something that he may not be as comfortable on. LeBlanc ban, Jenner did ban LeBlanc in their last meeting as well. Oh, Nar ban, interesting. Bit of a surprise right yeah. there. Huh. You know, a lot more top laners have been picking up Nar, and Shy has always pretty much refused to play him. So if Trace has suddenly kind of had a Nar resurgence like we've seen other top laners do, I suppose it does make some sense. Now, the Sivir may be CJ Antis' first go. They did pick oh, it yeah. on blue side first the last time these two met when Urgot and Callista were banned out. Well, they've got an opportunity to do that. Will they, though? Sejuani available, Thresh. They're not going to first pick Sarah. No, like this that's, is they're just totally trolling. trolling, yeah. No, not in a million years. Not after everything we've seen in the meta. You may pick Nautilus first here, too, actually. Or Garen. Or Nunu, okay. <laughs> Nunu. Okay. Ambition has played four out of his last five games on Nunu, and being very aggressive about the jungle control, especially counter jungling, he's been really much more active in terms of counter jungling in the second half of this season. He has a better idea of where the enemy jungler is and what his limits are. Would you consider, like, a Thresh Sivir, possibly, the takeaway here? I mean, Bard got buffs as well, too. I'd love to see him play competitively, but Honestly, it seems like a lot of pros are not too interested in it at the point, outside of China anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and China's been mostly on 5.6 too. So yeah. I do think Bard is going to be a strong pick on 5.7. They could take away the Lulu here. Okay. And that's what they're going to do. Away. Leaving that Sivir up though. Yeah, you do have to be worried, I think, about the Sivir. But now Jin Air is posturing for a possible Juggermoth at the moment. So yeah. that's going to be weighing heavily on CJ's mind. At least they got the new new in that case. Jenner also, instead of Thresh, could have taken the Nautilus away because that is a bit of a flex pick for Jenner. You know that Trace is willing to play that up into the top lane. True. What do you think about maybe a Hecarim pick for Shy here? Yeah. You know, if they're seeing that Juggermaw incoming, I feel yeah. like it'd be a good one to grab. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Hecarim is a, a great pick here to try and deal with that situation. They may huh. grab Morgana as a lane counter to this Thresh. Suppose. Now, you don't know on Jin Air who's going to play Lulu either, because both Trace and GBM have done well on that champion in the past, including a game by GBM where he got over 1,000 AP on Lulu and yeah. was absolutely blasting people. And here we go. Could oh, be really? Shivana for Shy. I really think Shy is going to be a player who flourishes in the Smite top meta. It's going to be Cassie see right Appeal now. locked in for Coco, though, and it looks like Mad Life will be taking that Morgana. Too bad. Would rather see the Blitzcrank of the Nautilus, but oh well. And are we going to maybe see the Shivana for Jin Air if they send that Lulu down to bottom lane? So Shivana for Chaser, it'd be good to see him get a little bit more engaged right here. Yeah, just don't change it to Jarvan, please. Oh, what do you think about a Jinx here? Well, they could have any, uh, they could use a different hyper carry as opposed to the Kog'Maw. Maybe the Kog'Maw is just a little bit safer, but they're actually gonna lock it in and we don't oh, see wow. very much Jinx here in Korea. Yeah, we don't, I mean, do you feel like Jinx can burn through tanks better than Kogma? I suppose there is that. You do need to get a bit closer, though. Well, yeah, and it just depends on what you're looking for. I think right here, Doa, they're looking for the Jinx Thresh lane, which is very strong. True. Uh, because you can play into traps and have all of this hard CC, so it does set you up for some nice ganks in the laning phase to get the Jinx pretty far ahead. Could take Kogma right here. True. Uh, they'd have two scaling hyper carries, though, for CJ, and they're going to have to wait really pretty well into the late game in order to function with this composition. It looks like that's wow. just what they're going to do, locking that's, it in. That's risky for CJ. You don't have a very good this early game jungler in Nunu in terms of skirmishing, and you have Kogma, Hecarim, and Cassiopeia that are all very item dependent in order to get into that late game. Now, late game, is this composition scary? Absolutely. But they only have Remember, they only have one reliable form of engage, and that is going to be uh, Hecarim either ulting or teleport home guarding into the back line. So Jin Air, I actually really like their composition. They have a lot of protection here for Pilot. Pilot, a player that is known for having quite good positioning yeah. and conservative positioning in team fights. Man, imagine Sejuani and Shivana going in there and they're getting wild growth too. It's going to be pretty crazy. 
Yeah, I, I think Jyn Air, now they are going to live and die by Pilot's performance. They have a top tank and a mid Lulu, so Pilot is going to have to come up huge. And Trace, both top laners are going to have that spite up in the top lane, but Pilot, he's going to be the one that makes or breaks this game. So we'll see also, too, if, if Jyn Air's dragon control has improved. Do remember the last time these two teams met less than two weeks ago, Jyn Air did not get a single dragon all night. They got to get one tonight if they want to move on. Well, theoretically, Jyn Air should have the advantage in early skirmishing and team so, fighting, yeah. so they should be confident in terms of taking that dragon. Shivana will have a harder power spike at level six compared to this Hecarim because of all the extra armor and MR she gets during her ultimate. So. That's right. Well, here we go, guys. The first game of the playoffs here in Champion Spring, CJ versus Jyn Air. Let's get in the game. You know, in the finals, I hope they have like that bird fly over the audience or something. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, here we go, guys. I'm actually going to wear a bird suit during the finals. <laughs> we'll just like float down from the rafters or something on a zip line. That'd be awesome. A zip line over the audience in yep. chicken costumes. We'll have Michael Keaton show up in his Birdman suit from that movie. It's a great movie, by the way. But CJ versus Jyn Air. First game of the playoffs. I'm happy we're back in the best of fives again, Ch getting chased away. Poked pretty hard. Yeah, W start from Morgana though. So. That makes sense, getting that quicker level two. Yeah, not too surprising, but yeah. he did show that he actually had leveled that ability already. So uh, they are going to get a ward in, CJ that is, at the Gromp to see what is going on in that lane. Looks like Pilot may be going for a lane swap right here just to farm up. Of course, having that Kog'Maw W harass very annoying early and a Morgana not the best lane for Thresh yeah. either. I mean, so Jyn Air wanting to have that swap is somewhat understandable, but they could be doing a 2v1 mid. Ooh, Doa, I like it, the strats. It's gonna really mess with this Cassiopeia. Yeah, it really it's, will. It's gonna be pretty hard. And GBM gonna be going top in that solo matchup, one would presume, Should after Hecarim well. gets level two from the Raptors. Well, and Lulu's gonna be able to poke Hecarim very heavily early it's on. It's really so. annoying, even if he does have a level advantage. Yeah, I like the way these lanes are shaping up for Jyn Air early on. A good start. So, another 2v1 mid, actually. Yeah. Uh, We've been seeing more of this with that smite top meta. Yeah, KT actually executed this extremely well in one of their recent games. Yeah. Uh, probably oh. probably the most impressive smite top we've seen was Someday's Hecarim in that game where uh, some of the 2v1 mid income came in. They decided to put Nagne on Kennen in the bottom lane and 1v2 him. And they really got a huge advantage out of that low kill game, but very effective. So Shy is just going to go ahead and TP in. in that taking yeah. the Raptors, and Chaser will grab the blue buff after Gromp, and then we will see the TP from Trace. In that game, though, with KT, that Hecarim came in late and just destroyed <laughs> people. It wasn't even funny. Yeah, you look at the stat line, you're like, oh, someday it was 0 0 6 on Hecarim, and then you realize he yeah. was 100 CS ahead, and nobody could do anything about him, and they yeah. successfully denied a lot of farm from the enemy. And so Jyn Air, a little bit of a copying of, of that style, of course, having Shivana in the 2v1, not nearly as good as a cannon. I really like this though against Hecarim, because by keeping the lane presumably pushed up against her, it's going to give Hecarim less chance to go and farm the jungle, right? You know what I would have done, though, Doa? What? Is I think I would have given Lulu the blue buff and sent her into bottom uh. lane in a 1v2. You have to question that a little bit, just because she does have more of an ability to farm, but also Trace has that smite, so he can go back and farm the jungle. I'm not sure which would be better, but it is a consideration in this game. Well, Lulu is pretty uh, is a, quite a mana hog, though, so giving her the blue buff would be really nice, especially if you want to just keep pushing the lane with those glitter lances. Yeah. I see what you mean. I kind of like it. Now, Trace, Trace seems to be doing okay, however. Uh, he is a bit behind in terms of CS, and Coco has been able to clear out that wave in the mid lane with some efficiency. Space, try and freeze the wave right here. Yep. Dragging it up towards the tri brush, and he's not going to be able to do it, actually. Mm, tried. The other wave just didn't quite get there in time. Yeah, Trace chasing him out just a little bit. He's going to go back and do the gromp right now. Yep, he needs a bit more CS. He's down by 12 to Shy already. This, this isn't 
working out great, although we do have a slight lead for GBM by that token, and Trace is actually getting more money by farming this Grom, so it's really hard no, to judge true. these situations. You know, it is. With all the extra gold you get from some of these uh, smite top laners, it is a little bit challenging, but actually Trace not starting with Machete or anything like that, so I don't believe he gets any bonus gold, does he? No, he doesn't get bonus gold, but still, the jungle camps are worth a lot more than a minion. No, that's true. They're worth about, the Gromp right now is worth about three three minions. So, that is true. Uh, also, Trace is able to get that Gromp buff repeatedly, which makes it more difficult for Space to trade with him yeah. with autos. He will take a, a bit more damage from that. So, But even so, Shy definitely opening up with a large CS advantage right now. Trace heading back to base to pick up a Cloth Armor. And Shai's Hecarim has just been kind of the latest in his line of really good champions this season. All right. Potential potential start here onto this dragon, but no, Ambition just wants to go ahead and get the Scuttle Crab. Yep. And there's a hook onto Coco from Che. Yep. It's a little bit of damage Ambition there, just to make sure they're backing him up. And Chaser going with a little bit of deep warding in the enemy side. He also stole away that wolf, the big wolf well, camp. I think if, if Jin Air could come away with anything from that last match is that we need to really have better dragon control and better vision leading into that. And, and I feel like some of these deep rewards are going to help them keep an eye on where Ambition is and maybe try to set that up. Well, they... Nunu yeah, has mean, a way of taking dragon when Trace, you're not expecting it. Trace is pretty falling pretty far behind it here. Not in mm -hmm. terms of levels, but just in terms of CS. We see that gulf widening as they put the Shivana into the 1v2. And that same, that same expanse is not opening up between Coco and GBM right now. So. Well, we, we've seen this kind of thing before. Who was it that was playing top Vlad that got put in the bottom lane in a 2v1 and just oh, couldn't do geez. anything? So, yeah, like, that was Samsung tried that. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, it's not quite the same level. But that, that is one of the, I think, kind of tough at things least, about the mid. At least Shivana can jungle. That's, oh, that's, that's true, the that's advantage. True. <laughs> it's not quite as that's bad. It's, it's, not, it's the advantage. Yeah. yeah. That is the advantage. <laughs> Mad life coming Getting up back. here into the mid lane. Just Chaser a moment. coming down. Che as well, I think. Ooh. They may have an idea. Ambition right there to try to help. Nice dark binding from Mad Life to make an escape. And GBM starting with an arm guard actually up against this Hecarim, so he's oh, okay. going to be delaying his build quite a bit. Looked like he was being harassed too much by the Hecarim, so that's a bit of a surprise right here. Yeah, I am a little bit surprised by that as well. And it's a pretty big commitment, too, because that means that pretty much Pilot and Che have to stay in the mid lane and that GBM is not going to be able to lane against this Cassiopeia for the next, basically, the foreseeable future. Well, They're this. really committed to it, and CJ is just going to go ahead and take out an early dragon. This is one of the reasons why they've been able to get so many of them, too, because Ambition has just been playing Nunu over and over again, and it's pretty easy to take those early dragons with Nunu. Trace is here, though. Ambition may... Yeah, but so is Mad Life. Oop. Yeah. Jay couldn't quite be there in time. Yeah. And Blue Buff was already going to be taken by Chaser. So they don't have an opportunity to respond to that, even though Trace did suss it out in the end. And he's going to be in a bit of trouble here. Sheen already completed for space. So there's a lot of harassment potential, even with this cloth armor coming up. Wow. Yeah, space. Good. A lot of damage. Yes, he's taking, both of these guys are taking quite a bit, actually. Trace is just waiting for that moment where he can just dive onto the carry and just insta-give him. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's coming, potentially. And it's about he's 300 gold, the difference right now, and most of that is just between Shy and Trace so far. It's dangerous so far uh, letting this Hecarim get so big at this point in the game. We have seen what happens when it has been allowed to occur before. Now, even though Chaser has been, uh, had some of his camps taken, of course, by Trace in the bottom side, because they have so much pressure in the mid lane, he has a lot more freedom to roam around in counter jungle compared to Ambition. So he's been supplementing that with Ambition's camps. So they have remained pretty even in terms of CS, but they're not going to be able to take this blue buff. And really what Jyn Air needs to do right now is they have to capitalize on this in terms of turrets. Jinx's fast pushing potential is obviously quite high. You want to be able to use that minigun to quickly and efficiently clear the towers out. So we'll have to see how much damage they got onto the mid lane turret. But that's going to be the thing that reverses the gold. You know, one thing that 
Jr. seems to be doing a little bit better in this first game as Che attempts to grab Coco there, is we've seen them kind of pick themselves into compositions that have very small windows of success, and it seems like they've got a lot more wiggle room with this one. They do uh, in that as long as Jinx gets big. The thing that I'm concerned with right now is that they're going to lack damage because their second major damage threat has to be Shivana here. Mm, yeah. And Shivana's getting starved. Meanwhile, CJ has a Blood Boil, Kog'Maw, a Cassiopeia, and a Hecarim. They have massive damage and carry potential out of three sources. Meanwhile, Trace is getting shut down. That puts even more pressure on the pilot to perform in this game because he has to have that big time carry performance in order to forge an air to succeed. Meanwhile, CJ Entis has a lot more fallback options, I feel. Yeah. If Pilot dies first in a fight at the mid game at this point because Trace is very low in terms of his gold, half the CS, uh, that's disastrous. Even though he is getting go a lot more gold thanks to the completed Skirmisher Saber from this Gromp right now. Meanwhile, Ambition's just gonna take that. Yeah, uh, we might have a bit of a dive on the Shy yeah, here ambition. in the top lane, but uh, with the, I think they were spotted by a ward coming up river too, but it looks like it will allow them to actually get this top turret, which will be nice. They may just barely edge out the first turret of the game here, as bot is probably going to go down for CJ any moment. Wow, they can't quite get it. And so CJ will take that first turret. Shy could be setting up to get dove, however. There is yeah, a true. ward in the tri brush, so he will be seen. In They're that situation, try. Chaser not going to risk it. Just going to go for the easy. But the problem now for Jin Air is that this wave has not been bounced off the turret. Now, Shy is not going to freeze it. He's just going to push it out. Yep. Well, he's probably going to be going back to get home guards pretty soon here, too. And I think CJ has got a, a really good long-term plan to set up for the second dragon now as well, too. With this home guard Hecarim teleport in cage, wouldn't that give them a, a pretty big edge? Well, yeah, this, uh, especially because Trace doesn't have any real combat stats yet either. GBM right? doesn't too. So that's, that's not very good. So yeah. Jin Air here, I think this is really a, a precarious situation for them to say the least, already down that dragon. And nearly all of that gold differential is between Shy and Trace at this point, about 600 of it, you know, just guess, between those two champions. I guess Coco just has a tier at the moment, but he'll probably be able to go pick up a Blasting Wand before the next dragon. Yeah, he. We'll see what he, if he goes for a Blasting Wand or for Abyssal. Jinx not going to be uh, doing okay. a lot yet because Jinx did the, the Avarice build for a little bit harder scaling, but yeah, more weak, at least. Yeah, more weakness in the early game. I'll drag and it up now, and now, GBM going for the Athenes after the Oops. Arm Guard. It's a little bit of CDR, but not a lot of damage. Very... Very worrisome indeed. Well, there's the BF sword for Pilot, but oh, okay. Jin Air's a long, long way from being able to fight right now. And the longer they wait, CJ just kind of scales harder in every, every conceivable position right Whoa. here. Coco just goes back and finishes Archangel's staff. That's so. actually really aggressive. Well, that, with this dragon coming up in 50 seconds, it's probably a good choice to just get that little edge, isn't it? Yeah, I don't... Oh, maybe a plan of ambition here. They're going to take out this mid lane turret. Yeah, you can't leave Jinx alone with that. Yep. Good rotation by Jin Air into the mid lane right before the dragon comes up. Now yeah. they may be able to push that wave back and see what they can do. But Trace still without a lot of meaningful items. And Shy going for the bomby Cinder, actually. I mean, at least Trace has that skirmisher so he can reduce damage on somebody he's jumping onto in the fight. But CJ trying to set up, trying to grab that Rift Scuttler. Ambition will grab it. Or eat it, rather. Yeah. Grab it with his mouth. Consume Smite. Yep. And CJ definitely has the better setup right here. I don't know. This is this is such a bad position for Jin Air to be in. Yeah, the gold may be even after that last turret, but this is not where you want to be. You can't contest these early dragons. And CJ has such a monster scaling composition. Jin Air is going to go for it in spite of no crab control. Huh. And I think CJ. CJ can give this up if they want to. It's yeah, they don't need to. And here's a teleport coming in. Lee, or Shy rather, is going to be going on that. Chaser comes in, waits for it. Oh, and there's Siobhan over the top onto space. Gets dove immediately, but there's Shy to protect. Meanwhile, Dragon gets taken by Ambition, and Jin Air gets pushed back again. Oh, wow, a kill for space as well, too. There's first blood going to CJ. And just like that, a nice lead for them early on. Both Dragons, first blood, a turret to boot.
And Jin Air, like we thought, just didn't have enough strength to fight that dragon fight. And also, Jin Air missed two ults. They missed Chaser's ult and they missed Pilot's ult right there. And that could have been the crucial turnaround had the Sejuani ult and had the Jinx ult hit. They could have maybe used that Jinx passive to power on through, considering GBM was holding his wild growth for that possibility. Instead, Trace just Stop dies in the that. bottom bottom side, and there's no real answer from Jin Air. It's difficult if they let Ambition get an angle on the Dragon like that to take it. Yeah, it seems that way. Well, this is going to allow CJ to do a little bit more counter jungling too, and start to try to starve out Trace, which uh, they have, well, continue to starve out Trace, I should say, I guess. He's still way down on CS. To shy at the moment. Trinity Force done for space now. Pilot still looking to finish that IE, but it's going to be a while. A really smooth transition from CJ into topside as well, just pushing down turrets as much as they can now that they have this Kog'Maw with the Trinity Force. And there's nobody here to defend it. Trace is the only one on the top side, and he can't deal with Space's Kog right now. Nope. I think CJ is just going to run away with this one, Doa. This is, this is a terrible, terrible situation for Jyn'Air to be yeah. against a comp that scales like CJ's. Well, when you look at this too, yeah, they might get this bottom turret here, but yeah, how do you really fight this later on? How do you push against it? This works just as long as it's only shy there. When Ambition comes back, they barely get share out or a pilot out, rather. Oh, Trace, wow, just getting blown up under the turret too. What in the world was that? Mad Life just gets a really nice alt off. Well, he just has no items right now. He's, so. he's not tanky. Trace also not using his ult right there. He made a yeah. check and see if he had a full Fury bar or not, but I don't think he expected the damage coming in from that all in, but that's a tier two traded for a tier one in the end, and now CJ with a very large gold lead for their composition and for this point in the game. Yeah, we've seen this type of thing before, and, and uh, Jyn Air has really kind of struggled to come back this season and space going for a oh QSS as his second item actually just Why not? worried about the crowd control that he could get hit by he knows how far ahead he is no core item even finished for pilot yet so well really no core item finished except for that Athenes across the entire uh, Jyn Air team right now yeah. I suppose Juggernaut's done for Chaser but still Ugh. there's the IE now for pilot so Jyn Air picking up a couple items but it's unfortunate that they're losing these fights and losing these objectives right before they get the items that could have helped them keep them. The way that Jyn Air can still win this is if they get some sort of massive team fight in a choke where they can clog it with Wild Growth and yeah. with the Glacial Prison and with a Sejuani Ultimate. Well, but so that's far. about it. And CJ's not giving them that opportunity. They're just sieging right now with the Blood Boil in the zone. could from... come from the side here with his ult. Man, I don't think this works. Well, Shy's right there. He's going to find him. Trace kind of committed. Now Pilot gets locked up by that Dark Binding. Chaser with an ult, but no follow-up there. Jay tried to get up there for maybe a death sentence, but... Well, they had to have happen. the follow-up from the Shivana, and yeah. Shy was busy zoning. Shivana off the turret, so there's just no way. And uh, Jyn Air has had issues. We talked about this earlier with their engage. And oh, this grab on the Coco. He's going to go in now. Nice box chase. Going to get blown up. Ambition with a nice zone, but that absolute zero there. Shy comes over the top. They take down the turret. Mad Life with a couple people on his ult. He's going to lock up Pilot and Pilot. Going to get destroyed there. Mad Life manages to make it away from the turret. So. Two kills right there, CJ losing nobody, and it looks like they may gain this inhibitor turret off of it as well. Yeah, they will. They're going to get it. Man, this will not be a long game, will it? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Doa. And it's uh, not looking like this one's going to go Jyn Air's favor, and you know, again, if they lose this game one, I don't know. And yeah, there we go, Che and Chaser get hit by the Cassiopeia old night. Yeah. Ba nice back off right there, so not even interrupting the absolute zero because he hit it before the flay could actually go down and then pilot gets locked up and destroyed right before they take that inhibitor and you know Dol, we've seen a lot of teams in a lot of region regions try and run a tank top and a lulu mid uh, either as part of a juggernaut composition or with another hyper carry like jinx and i'm just not a fan it's not that it can't work it's that it puts too much emphasis on that carry and if something goes wrong there's no real way to recover. Yeah. And Trace getting so far down early meant that truly, truly, truly in this composition, it was all down to Pilot and Trace just gets destroyed too quickly. Meanwhile, CJ, 
they did pick a composition with some risks. They have a, an immobile AD carry. They have an immobile mid laner and a top laner that really requires that a lot of items to deal damage to the back line. But with the advantages they got in the early game, they're able to accelerate that scaling. And now here we are where it looks like it's going to take kind of a miracle for Jyn Air to come back out of this one. And I mean, it's, a, it's only a 5K gold lead at less than 20 minutes, but you can't can't underemphasize the scaling of CJ's composition and yeah. what that gold lead means. Well, I mean, still, you can just say it's a 5k gold lead at 20 minutes. That's still significant by itself here. Next yeah. dragon up in five seconds. There's no way Jyn can contest the dragon either. So yep. they didn't make enough also out of that duo in mid. They didn't get a substantive advantage in sending that Shivana into the 1v2. Maybe better to give GBM the 1v2 in this situation because he's less item dependent uh, in this composition. They don't really need GBM to be dealing damage as long as he has that utility. Would have been a lot more useful for, to have Trace with a bit more farm. Wow, so if if CJ manages to close this out without Jyn'Air getting a dragon, which I think is totally possible right now, that'll be three games in a row that Jyn has been denied any dragons by CJ. That's pretty depressing. It's a pretty huge stat. That does not happen a whole lot. And, oh, Ambition nearly get blown up there. Takes a lot of damage from the turret. They use Pilot's ultimate as well, and Chasers too, but couldn't get a kill. And Chase ult, they use so much, and oh, all they did was barely save the turret. Oh, no, 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 Trace got that one. Shy may have gotten himself in a bit of trouble right here. Yeah, there's the Dragon's Ascent. Shy just ulting away from it. Yeah, that's much bigger for Hecarim than it is for Shivana because right. Shivana's ult doesn't really have a cooldown besides that Fury bar. So, yeah. Goodbye, oh, GBM. GBM! Mad Life wow. has been just landing hook after, or not hook <laughs> after hook, bind after bind tonight. His hey, skill shot well accuracy has been really good, and he and Space working very well to pick up these kills under the towers. Oh, I like what you said. Oh, Mad Life getting grabbed here. They're going to try to bring him back in, but he dodges a W from Pilot. Oh, Shy, side. hello, over the top, just wanting to zone them with that turret, but nobody really poking at it. Maybe not the world's best teleport. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll probably still get the turret either way. But Shy just working on the intimidation factor at this point. There we go. He'll take it out. But yeah, I mean, Mad Life, just having that confidence back is, is really what seems to be allowing him to be making plays like he's been making again. It's also that Space seems more confident in himself. Yeah, Space sure. always for the last couple of years has seemed very reluctant to follow up on Mad Life's playmaking, but something really clicking between the two of them this season where finally Space will play aggressively when Mad Life goes aggressive, has that trust, has that faith in his support that to follow up and complete an all-in. I mean, say what you will about Wung's aggressive arcane shifts back in the day, but he really did produce a lot of great opportunities for Mad Life to just be Mad Life. Yeah, and only now is the armor starting to be built on Trace. Meanwhile, Blade of the Ruin King will be finished very soon for space here. Yep. And after that, he'll move into that last Whisper, but not enough armor really ju to justify the last Whisper yet. Meanwhile, GPM has that Athens and I guess a Blasting Wand now, probably going to be trying to get Death Cap, but yep. it's just not a lot you can do. The well, kills on CJ really going where they need to go as well, too. On the Mad Life, and a little bit for Space and Coco, too. So that's nice. It is. Nice. Mostly Mad Life. <laughs> well, both Space, my mind. both Space and Mad Life have that 100% kill contribution rate yeah, so they far do. in this game. And CJ playing great. Yeah, they, they are. But I'm afraid to say that. Like, I feel like every time I say that, they will just immediately lose the team fight horribly and then throw the entire series. But I, I'll take a risk and say that they are indeed playing great right now. And it looks like they're going to be able to secure an inhibitor pretty soon here. Slame Choppers running out, and there it goes. So inhibitor taken easily. And CJ's just got total control of the map right now. They can bait Baron anytime they want. They can take their dragons at leisure at this point. Trace is not going to get a chance to smite anything in his own jungle ever again. Massive lead. Yep. 8K. 8K at 23 minutes and five kills to zero, seven turrets to three, the inhibitor. I mean, it's hard to dominate harder than CJ is dominating right now. And especially with these scaling champions, that is a huge blow, to, I think, to Jyn Air's mentality in this series. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, the thing is with Jyn Air, like we said, if they lose the first game, they usually lose this, well, they have always been losing the second game harder. 
Yeah, so no. if they lose this first game like this, it's not looking for the series. Coco flashes away there. Gets out of it. They're still going to be, gonna be able to get that, that turret. turret. Uh, oh, nearly getting it. Don't want to start the resets right there. Yeah. Smarter just to back off, at least for the moment. There's the first super minion. You don't want Pilot to start getting excited. Because honestly, that's that's the thing that could turn it around. You know, if, if Jinx gets a really good team fight, Ambition gets grabbed there. There goes the turret. But yeah, Jinx is able to get those resets and do a lot of damage. Maybe they can turn it around. Space getting chunked pretty hard there. Trace may come in. They're going to turn on him. Trace forced to ult away, actually. There we go. Ult use Chaser. They're going to follow him in there. Wild growth onto Trace. But Shy going back into the back lines, forcing Holy Jinner away. Cow. They're going to run over Pilot. Through all of that as well, too, and Space is going to take out Shay with ease. There's a double kill there. And goodbye, Jin Air. Shy just decides he wants to kill Chaser, because why not? Bad there. Life hit the Ooh, hook yeah. on the what? pilot, or hit the, hit the bind on the pilot in that fight, and then ulted him to keep him CC forever. Wow, what a great game me? from Bad Life. Look at this. Another great game from Bad Life, as he's had in the last couple series now. And at 25 minutes, one of the quick, quickest games we've seen all season. CJ takes down Jin Aaron with a win like that. Honestly, I think we might be in for a pretty quick best of five. I think we might be too, but Mad Life again, he has shown up in the last few matches. Mad Life that, is back. Yeah, that last fight, he got into the mix, hit Pilot with the bind, and then used his ultimate to keep him CC'd that entire time. There was no chance. And that's the only threat that Jin Air decided to pick with their with their draft. I wow. mean they were very reliant on Pilot. I don't agree with these style of composition. So Jin Air, they, they did pick different champions, but I think they all end a little bit too hard right there. And you know, the, lately it seems like if the first 10, 12 minutes don't go well for Jin Air, they just look completely lost for the rest of the game. 